People say they believe in ghosts, but difficult to believe in the Lord. Reverend Dr. Holly Namokian, United Methodist Church. Translator, Mrs. Irene Park. Reader, Mr. Jacob Lee. The majority of people I counsel complain that no matter how much they pray, they cannot feel the Lord, cannot meet the Lord, cannot hear his voice, and even unsure of their salvation. They wonder if Jesus really loves them and only wish they would meet him somehow. It simply means they cannot believe. On the contrary, there is nobody who does not believe in ghosts. They constantly concede the existence of evil spirits with their own mouth, but bothered by the fact that they cannot meet the Lord and believe in Jesus. They are confused whether Jesus is really alive or if they trust some kind of invention. This was the picture of myself 40 years ago. Even though our family had three generations of ministers, I was confused whether I really believed or not. My father always told me not to worry about my salvation by saying, since I believe all my family is saved. He often quoted the scripture from the book of Acts. You and your household will be saved. So I did not give much attention to my personal salvation. Since our family was a household of faith, I naturally believed the whole family was saved. But I was in agony since God of Abraham did not feel like my own. I kept the pilgrimage to find my God. It was a zealous pilgrimage to find God of my grandfather, God of my father, and God of myself. Because of that reason, I could very well understand those struggling with faith and how to lead them to the right way became my assignment. So I asked the Lord about it during my closet prayer time before going to bed, and our merciful and faithful Lord showed me through a dream again. The story of the dream is as follows. I was going out with a rich young man. He was very rich and loved me tenaciously. He was capable of doing everything for me. The only shortcoming was that he was an unbeliever. And then someone introduced another man to me. He was single, but had two adopted children, a boy and a girl. When I met him, I realized he was someone I used to admire long time ago. His qualification was not as good as that of the unbelieving man, and he looked strenuous with the children. But he was a good Christian and he sincerely loved me as soon as he saw me. Since the matchmaker kept telling me good things about him, before I knew it, my heart leaned toward him. Friends warned me not to go into a relationship with this man saying how difficult it would be to raise someone else's children. But the more they opposed me, the more his character stood out. I saw humility and sincerity in him, which I could not find in the other person who was an unbeliever. I even met his adopted children and they were raised well with the love of their father. They were cheerful and without any shadow. As soon as I met them, I loved them. But the previous boyfriend, the unbeliever heard about my news and followed me around threatening. One day, as I was leaving from the house of my beloved, an open car dashed towards me and tried to kill me. I screamed with all my strength, help, and many people crowded near and saved me. It was my previous boyfriend who tried to kill me. I fainted and was transferred to a hospital. After I woke up, I was totally bewildered. Why did the Lord give me such a dream? But it did not take long to interpret. 
because I remember that I prayed for an answer regarding my assignment before I went to bed and realized the Lord showed me the answer through a dream. Long time ago, the Lord said that he chose me as a matchmaker and led me to teach bride Bible school. He told me to bring many brides to him through the Bible study. Since 1992, I visited Korea four times a year for bride Bible research and taught the ministers about the biblical history of salvation, soteriology. A good matchmaker can introduce precious brides to a bride girl. Why? Because the matchmaker can give a good presentation about the bridegroom in the middle. The person who knows about the bridegroom the best is the matchmaker. The influence of a matchmaker is enormous since he, she, is the only person who knows about the bridegroom. Even though bluffing and lying matchmakers exist in the world, Christian matchmakers are not so. Whenever I went up to the podium to preach, the Lord, sitting on the edge of the platform, always encouraged me saying, Polly, I trust you can do well. Preach again wonderfully about my love. The love of the bridegroom fighting. From the dream, I realized the previous boyfriend became abusive even to the point of killing in order to make me stay or better to describe, not to lose me. I also realized that if I married the other man, it is not just marrying him, but I would have to serve his children as well, God's children. When I am united with the Lord, it means I ought to accept his children as my own. You can enter God's kingdom only through the narrow gate. The highway to hell is broad and its gate is wide for the many who choose that way. But the gateway to life is very narrow and the road is difficult, and only a few ever find it. Matthew 7, verses 13 and 14. From the external point of view, one could say she made a crazy choice. But if you are in love with Jesus, you can overcome any difficulties no matter what. But there are hindering paths, the evil spirits. Since these groups tenaciously interfere the marriage and union with the Lord, there will not be many who would give up the highway and choose the narrow road of the cross. And the role of the matchmaker is very crucial in such a moment. So faith comes from hearing, that is, Hearing the good news about Christ, Romans 10, verse 17. Since faith comes from hearing, the matchmaker ought to speak about the bridegroom as much as possible. Whether it is a sermon, scripture reading, or even a product briefing, the more you hear about it, the more faith you will attain and finally open your heart. For I am jealous for you with the jealousy of God himself. I promise you as a pure bride to one husband, Christ. But I fear that somehow your pure and undivided devotion to Christ will be corrupted, just as Eve was deceived by the cunning ways of the serpent. 2 Corinthians 11 verse 3. The Bible already mentions that the cunning serpent deceives the heart of the bride to be corrupted. But in spite of everything, the matchmaker ought to preach the gospel with jealousy of God. What does it mean by with jealousy of God? I always interpret it as with love of God, with heart of God. The reasons why the temptations of evil spirits can be felt near, whereas God's love seems intangible, is as follows. Being lazy in hearing, not wanting to follow the narrow path, not wanting to confront the devils and holding two hearts. There is no one who confesses he cannot feel the evil spirits. They believe without any doubt. However, in order to feel the love of unseen God, 
You must hear Allah. You must hear about him, Allah, and really know Yada, him. Yada means knowing the Lord intimately as a relationship with a husband. All the principles which Jesus taught are in the Bible. Unseen devils and unseen God, but the fact that people believe in evil spirits more is because they are listening to the devils much more. Put your hand on, your, on the chest and ponder about it. Do you watch the media more? Do you quietly listen to your bridegroom more and delight in him? The answer must be there. The Lord explained today as follows. If devils exist, it means the spiritual realm exists and there is God who governs that spiritual world. If you cannot believe in devils, naturally, you could not believe in God either. Believing in devils while not believing in God is simply not logical. How could devils exist by themselves? How could the spiritual realm exist by itself? Since there is the creator God, all exist, such as humans, angels, even devils. Believing in one and not the other is simply incoherent. It is only natural to believe in God if you can believe in devils. How could you recognize evil spirits and think the creator God who governs the whole world does not exist? There are many people who complain that even though they pray more, read the Bible more, desire the Lord and serve more, give more, in spite of all, they cannot meet the Lord. And even when you ask, you don't get it because your motives are all wrong. You want only what will give you pleasure. You adulterers. Don't you realize that friendship with the world makes you an enemy of God? I say it again. If you want to be friend of the world, make yourself an enemy of God. James 4, verses 3 and 4. So humble yourselves before God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Come close to God, and God will come close to you. Wash your hands, you sinners. Purify your hearts, or your loyalty is divided between God and the world. James 4, verses 7 and 8. There must be the answer in what Apostle James pointed out. If you think none of these apply to you, what could possibly be the problem? It might be that in spite of the fact that Jesus has met you, you did not recognize him and kept asking for the same thing. What kind of parents would be silent when their child is in need? Would there be any parents who look away when the child cries out to me? Who would ignore their child who is starving or sick? Would there be any parent who neglects a child to become a prey for devils? Are you that kind of a parent? Do you look away cruelly and keep silent at such critical moments for your child? If you are not so, it is the same with our Father God. He made these promises. Ask me and I will tell you. Jeremiah 33 verse 3. Ask me for anything in my name and I will do it. John 14 verse 14. Keep on asking and you will receive what you ask for. Matthew 7, verse 7. Since we have his promises, change your prayer and attitude accordingly. Even though I do not feel you right now, you are with me all the time. God of Ebenezer, God of Emmanuel, I thank you. Even when I was away from you, you protected me as your own eye. You are my shepherd, God of Jireh. I praise you. I ask you to walk with me continually and become our Lord unto my offsprings, as in Psalm 128. Thank you, and we pray in Jesus' name. 
Amen. Concede as a fact that the Lord is next to you and draw near him intimately. Then you will meet his awesome bosom. Keep acknowledging. Even if you do not feel it, admit the fact that he is with you based on the scriptures. If you want to be treated, treat God as he is with you. He is not somebody you have to make an effort to meet. He is already next to you as a loving father. Admit his presence and go near him with intimacy. You can order these three books from Amazon Kindle. 365 Prayers of Blessing for Your Children. Theory and Praxis of Land Work. The Lord's Visitation for 14 Days. My beloved bride, heal as I reveal. This video is made by Reverend Dr. Holly Namo Yun Lee, who is a minister of the United Methodist Church. She got a degree of Doctor of Ministry at Claremont Theological Seminary in California. She is an executive director of Menowa Ministry. She carries a healing ministry. She is an author of 40 books and led 1,000 revival services and over 200 seminars for ministers. Now, she lives in California with her husband, Reverend Peter Yongtek Lee. She is the fourth daughter of Dr. Sung Bum Yun, former president of Methodist Theological University in Seoul, Korea. In Hebrew, Menua is an adjective that describes being restful. We use the term Menua as a noun. Please hit the subscribe button for Yunnamok TV, News from Heaven. Thank you for watching this video.